Let's get into it and get involved with sharing the truth to whomever will listen. It's videos like this that make it worth it because, you know, this is going to stop a lot of people from supporting William James Dennis, a.k.a. Willie D. And he would only have himself to blame, not me or anybody else that decides to share the same information. He created this crime or crimes. And it wasn't that long ago. This was back in 2010, for God's sake. That wasn't long ago. It wasn't 30 years ago when he was so-called young and dumb and full of crime. It was recently because it was out of a necessity because he's broke. I keep trying to tell you people that these motherfuckers are desperate. This is the best evidence of desperation that I've ever seen to date. It backs everything that I've said up 100%. I want you to listen. And if you have ever given this motherfucker money or even supported him as in watching his videos and being counted as a view so that he could get paid off AdSense, you're going to be angry. One thing that you won't do, you won't go back to listening to him. You won't ever give him another dime. And I don't blame you. See, the truth is something that people run from. Because it ruins everything for these frauds and cons out here that's trying to get over on you. They don't want you to know the truth. They don't want you to learn the truth. William James Dennis, a.k.a. Willie D., has been sentenced to prison. At that time, he was sentenced to prison for his conviction on wire fraud charges, stemming from his uh, sales of Apple iPhones and other merchandise through a company known as Texas One Wireless. Attorney Jose Angel Marino, an FBI special agent in charge, Richard C. Powers, announced today. At a hearing back in 2010 before the United States District Court Judge Gray Miller, the rap music recording artist was sentenced to 12 months and one day in a federal prison for a scam in which he admitted he admitted to posing as an electronics salesman. <laughs> he went from rap artist, celebrity, to electronics salesman, beating people and not actually sending the fucking merchandise, taking their money, stealing their money. And he used eBay to establish his credibility with international buyers. Let me stop right there. Of course, you know why he chose international buyers, right? They don't know anything about the United States. They get defrauded. They don't know who to contact, but he was wrong. He defrauded 35 of these individuals. They ended up finding out exactly what was going on. They also found out whom each other was. And they got together as a collective unit and they reported it to the FBI every day until the FBI felt pressured enough to actually look into it. When they looked into it the first day, they found evidence of fraud. The first fucking few minutes, probably. Um, and I'm not making this up, I'm telling you. I'm actually reading this uh, on the internet right now. I mean, it's all over there, you know, it's been there. I've heard about it, but I never really had time to really look into it. I made time because I want you to understand something. I've been telling you for a long time. Stop giving these niggas money. At least until you look up who they really are. See, they tell you one thing. Almost always not matching up with what you actually find out with what is actually the fucking truth. Let's read on. Um, where was I at here? He was sentenced to 12 months and one day in a federal prison, okay, for this fucking scam. Once a buyer showed interest, Dennis directed the buyer outside of eBay to conduct sales via email. <laughs> 
You see, that old plastic scam. Well, this iPhone costs $1,200. If you want it for $600, meet me off eBay and I'll sell it to you. But we have to not be on eBay's platform. I mean, they should have recognized that warning sign from the beginning. But I understand people make mistakes. They want deals. They want to save money. Who doesn't want to save money? You come across an opportunity. It's almost always too good to be true. Don't take it. And you won't have to risk losing your money. Dennis directed the buyers outside of eBay to conduct sales via email. Dennis, which serves three years of supervised release following completion of his prison term, which is 12 months and one day. And he was ordered to pay $200,000 in restitution. Damn. At least the $14,000 that was seized at the time inside his bank account. He only had $14,000 left. Yet again, some more evidence backing up my broke theory. He did this out of a necessity. So he spent $180 something thousand dollars probably trying to catch up his fucking bills. His bills probably were so far behind that as soon as he got this money, he was just giving it directly to the fucking bill collectors. And I know that he was in the pickle when they seized that $14,000 because that's all he had. That's all he had left. No wonder he's begging you for money. Now do you see why he's begging you for money? Now do you see why he's asking you to join the movement? The movement is to help him pay the restitution. That's the fucking movement. By God, after this video, I'm telling you, this nigga's done. I'm going to make sure of it. I'm going to stay on this nigga until he himself removes all his videos off YouTube and never return again and give it up and go on to the next hustle. Because it's going to take that because I'm telling you, once they get word, it's a lot of people that don't know this. Now, keep in mind, yes, it's a lot of people that know it, but they don't know all the fucking details because he is a fucking liar. I've heard him talk about this, you know, briefly one or two times and he tries to look like he's the hero and they put the hero in fucking jail and he didn't do anything wrong and, you know, it's a racist issue. Get the fuck out of here, man. You didn't send them that fucking merchandise. You never intended to send them one thing. Let's move on, man. Numerous foreign individuals placed orders with Dennis which was a total of 35 people. He was 44 at the time. They bought merchandise such as iPhones and other electronics. Dennis required payment to be electronically transferred to his bank account. <laughs> Once the transaction was confirmed, Dennis would send tracking numbers for packages that were never shipped. So he created all of this online with some kind of postal service, you know, and they would give him a random tracking number for whatever he said that he's going to ship. And I'm pretty sure when they actually came by to pick up the shipment or, or he was supposed to ship it out, it just never happened because he never intended on doing it. But he wanted this to look legitimate. So when you send somebody a tracking number almost instantly, they're not going to think much of it. They're going to say, well, you know, this person works fast, good, you know, because I want my product. So they let their guard down. But after two weeks, three weeks, four weeks, they started to think, well, wait a minute. Um, it doesn't take this long. And I'm pretty sure they started communicating with him, asking him questions, you know, through emails and stuff. Hey, man, I haven't received my package. Oh, man, you know, it takes time, you know, because I'm in the United States and you in London or Asia or India. Give it another week or so, you know. Check this out. Check this out. Um, Dennis would send the tracking numbers of packages that were never shipped. When the buyers complained about not receiving the products, the merchandise, Dennis would claim he had filed a complaint with the postal service or hired carriers and that he could not refund their money until he knew exactly where his goods were. Eventually, Dennis would just cease communication with the victimized parties. 
all together. <laughs> 35 individuals were defrauded out of $200,000 between September 2008 and April 2009. You see what I'm saying? All this speaks for itself. The charges arose after victims who did not receive their merchandise nor refunds after many attempts complained to law enforcement. The case was investigated by Houston Area Cyber Crimes Task Force, which is comprised of personnel from the FBI. <laughs> no wonder this nigga don't like the FBI. <laughs> that nigga despised the FBI. <laughs> and he make it seem like, you know, it's, it's all this bullshit that's going on out here. Look, this nigga is a criminal, man. I'm telling you. I don't see how you could trust this motherfucker. If you knew this information, you are just dumb. There's something wrong with you. It really is. You are too far gone. Knowing that this motherfucker defrauded 35 people, 35 different people, innocent people that work hard for their money every day, that was just trying to shop and buy something that they wanted to buy. And he never sent them not one thing. He already knew that he was going to do this. It wasn't that a problem occurred and the postal service lost 35 packages. He never sent them out. He admitted this in court because the judge told him, I won't accept your guilty plea until you are honest and say, you know what? Yes, I had something to do with this. I did it on purpose. Because at first he was trying to cry that same old fucking story, not guilty, and I don't know what happened to the packages, and somebody trying to frame me, and this is racism. It had nothing to do with racism. It had nothing to do with this. It had nothing to do with that. But it has everything to do with his desperation. That nigga was broke then, and he's broke now. That's why he's begging you for money right now. He's trying to get you to help him pay that fucking restitution, which is $200,000. Imagine him doing reunion shows and stuff. They're garnishing his wages until they come up with that $200,000. Meanwhile, he still has bills. He still has a life that he has to fund. Living costs money. You're not getting any money because you owe restitution. And there's no telling what else this motherfucker has did or what he's currently up to right now. Walk away from this motherfucker now while you have the chance unscathed. Don't be like these 35 victimized that have yet to have their money sent to them. They're all over the internet complaining about this motherfucker. He still owes $200,000 in restitution. I don't hear him talking about that on his videos. No more talk. No more talk. You need to talk about yourself. You need to continue to talk and tell them exactly what you did, you black fucking bastard. Defrauding people, man. You broke ass motherfucker. You had millions of dollars, man. No doubt you had enough money. If you would have managed that money and invested that money, you would have money today. You wouldn't have had to commit these crimes, but you committed the crimes out of a necessity because you needed the money. This is why you begging the people every day. Join the movement. Join the movement. Yeah, you want them to join the movement to help you pay restitution. I see that now. But I always knew, I always knew, even before this information, I always knew. Ladies and gentlemen, it's time to walk away from these frauds. Today is the day. You should have did it yesterday. You should have did it last week. You should have did it two, the three, the four, the five, the six years ago. Better late than never. But there is a date that calculates to too late. I'm telling you, you need to make the arrangements now to walk away. Stop supporting these motherfuckers. Stop giving money to these motherfuckers. And let them know why. I don't trust you. You didn't tell us the truth about this. You left this out. You want to talk about everybody, but you don't want to include yourself. This is worse than anything anybody else has done that he has ever talked about. Get the fuck out of here, man. You still want to listen to him? You still want to take advice with, from this fucking black ass motherfucker? This criminal? Defrauding 35 people out of $200,000. They're hard earned money, man. Imagine if that were you. You would be mad as hell, ready to fucking cut this nigga's head off. 
But because it's not you, and because the nigga's black and you black, you feel as if you ought to support him somehow. Still, even after these crimes and, oh, well, people can change. This nigga hasn't changed. This is what I'm trying to get you to see. He hasn't changed, nor will he ever change. He's learning from his mistakes now. He's trying to stay on the cusp of legal and illegal, trying not to cross into that illegal activity again that will land him in prison yet again. He had to pull one year in federal prison. I bet, it, I bet he didn't tell you that. If he did, it's attached to some fucking lame lie. Oh, well, see, the FBI framed me. Get the fuck out of here, man. Get the fuck out of here. How do you go from celebrity rapper to electronics fucking salesman? You created this shit because you wanted to scam people because you needed fucking money, man. Just be honest. Just be honest and tell the truth, man. You a fucking scammer and you still up to scamming. Want people to give you money simply for talking on a fucking recorded video. Fuck you, nigga. Ain't nobody giving you no money for that. Take your ass to motherfucking work somewhere. You fucking washed up ass fucking wannabe fucking rapper. Never did like any of your fucking shit, man. That shit was fucking pure fucking garbage. Garbage. Have you listened to that bullshit? Garbage. Motherfucker tried to go solo. Garbage. At least Scarface, he, he halfway made it going solo, but not this black motherfucker. Hell no. He tried, though, didn't he? <sighs> Willie D, you fucking criminal-ass motherfucker, defrauding 35 international citizens. I bet if they could get over here in America, if they could get to your ass, they would tear your ass all to pieces. I don't care about you being a fucking golden glove. Golden glove can't stop no fucking bully. You understand? Throwing punches and shit and come on, put on the gloves. Yeah, I'm putting on gloves, all right? Yeah. <laughs> Boy, this motherfucker, God almighty. Two hundred thousand dollars. Two hundred thousand dollars. He only had fourteen thousand dollars left. When they took that, I bet that nigga couldn't even bail himself out of jail. I bet he had to call and borrow money from somebody. Man, you know I I don't know when I can pay you back, man. Damn, I just really don't know. That's, damn, they got me fucked up, man. You know, frame me and shit. You know, nigga, nigga, can you get a nigga out of jail? Damn, I, I, you know, can you put your house up? Damn, man. Now you see what I'm talking about. You see how they casually leave all that information out. And then when somebody brings it up, oh, they ignore it. Like, you know, just as it never happened. This was recently. This was recently. It was only a few years ago. Stop giving your money to these fraudulent ass motherfuckers. He's not the only one with a background like this, I'm telling you. You would be surprised who else has something even worse than what he did. You would be surprised what they currently are involving themselves in right now. Besides begging you for money. It's a race for your money. It's a race for your money. I'm telling you. A thousand different Willie D's out there that's trying to get you to support them. That's trying to get you to give them money directly. Think about it. Constantly, when you go on YouTube, you are bombarded with beggars, man. It's almost like you walking to your corner store, to your corner bodega, and you got like 10 fucking bums waiting for you to arrive, man. You ain't going to have a pleasant experience going to that store. The next time, you won't go to that store. You're going to find another one that you can go to that you won't be bothered, bombarded with bums wanting you to give them money. Can, hey, man, can you give me a dollar? No, man, don't listen to him. Can you give me $2? I'm starving. I ain't had nothing to eat in three days. Uh, come on, man. Every last one of them, they want you to join the movement. They want you to help them so they can help you. I mean, I just don't understand that. They're not doing anything that's worth anything. I mean, certainly not worth your money. It's not worth your time. But yet you continue giving them all of the above. I think after this video, 
a lot more people is going to come to the determination that they won't ever give their money to either one of these motherfuckers ever again. And listen, I don't blame you. Walk away. Don't go back on your determination. See, this is what's called the truth. You can look it up. You can find the tangible evidence. It can't be ignored. You can't challenge this. The motherfucker pled guilty. He didn't have any choice because he was caught red-handed. He was ordered to pay $200,000 in restitution, which has yet to be paid, by the way. Every dime that you give him, you're helping him pay that restitution. You didn't defraud 35 people. So why should you have to pay for his mistakes? This nigga hasn't learned from his mistakes either. As soon as he get another opportunity, another fucking hustle, another fucking fraudulent He's going to go straight at it. Not paying attention to what happened last time. Maybe this time they might throw the book at me. And oh, by the way, he had to take a plea. Or he was going to face 10 years. Mandatory. Hard labor. <laughs> 10 years. You can look that up too. He pled guilty for that one year and one day and then... When he got out, three years supervised probation. I bet he won't talk about that. No more talk. Fucking bum. <laughs>